Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live, and tonight we have a special treat. Justin Chu Carey and Bashir Sylvain from Black Summer are joining us. We were in that memorable, memorable Season 2 Black Summer episode. I believe it was Episode 5, right, guys? Yes, sir. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing good. Doing good. I'm... uh... I'm just so happy that I got the both of you on. You guys had that memorable episode, and I've said this to you guys before. Everyone I've spoken to, even the actors themselves, not including you guys, it was their favorite episode of season two. So, I mean, hats off, Bashir, Justin, you guys did an amazing job in that episode. And we're going to dive into that more in a little bit. But Bashir, you started telling me, first of all, you and Justin have been friends for a long time, going back to acting school. How long are we talking about here? We're talking about over 10 years now. Damn. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the first acting class we took, Mr. Mike Beach uh, and Eric LaSalle class. And uh, and we've been literally just following each other since then. Like He would go to an acting class and then he would tell me about it. And I'd be like, oh, okay, cool, let's go. And I'll tell him about that class. He's like, all right, cool, let me check it out. <laughs> we'll go and... <laughs> We just kept like switching classes together and doing scenes together. Uh, and then we got a really beautiful chance to do a play. Um, well, first uh, we did a web series where I was, just, I did a web series where I was like, oh, can you be in it? But we never interacted in it. But then when we did a play together, that was uh, the first time we got to work. And then this was one of the most special things that ever happened to me. <laughs> now, Justin, like Bashir said, you guys worked together on that web series, on the play. What was it like doing a TV show? I mean, a whole episode with just you two guys. I mean, it was you know uh, unbelievable. <laughs> you know, it was it was one of those things that you don't think can happen. Like I don't even think our our dreams were were that big. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we were never like you know what I hope one day someone hires us, the two of us, to do an entire episode just. <laughs> just us do with nobody else <laughs> you know like i don't think that even entered our consciousness um so yeah it was it was amazing man it was it was beautiful it was a full circle moment for for the two of us um we've been through lots of ups lots of downs together you know we've had each other's back for professional stuff personal stuff you know and uh yeah it was it was just a, a beautiful moment um that i think will both cherish and, and hopefully not the last one. No, but, no. Oh. And I've been seeing your guys' pictures that you guys have been posting on social media, you know, of the fun you guys were having behind the scenes uh, shooting yeah. that episode. It just looked like you guys had a blast. And uh, it just felt like something really special. Now, Bashir, now the show starts off, that episode, with you following Spears, right? From a distance. Yeah. Uh, and you start talking. You're definitely a talker. Your character Brathwaite's a talker on the episode. And you're like, man, I know you from somewhere. Are you from this? Are you from there? Do you think Brathwaite knew all along who Spears, Little James, was and just didn't want to reveal it to him right away? I think... I personally think he did. Um, Um... Literally, where right I went, he saw for real for it. I think he kind of like had a hand, and once he really got up close and saw who he really is, he was just like, "Oh, okay." Because I mean, there's so many hints. Like you know, even when he said his name is Spears, he's like, "Nah, that ain't it." <laughs> you know, like who? If you really think about it, who would deny? If somebody was like, "Hey, man, my name is Michael," and you're like, "Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah," Michael, you know what I'm saying? Like. So it, it was definitely a lot of hints, and, and it was cool to play around with the idea of of also uh, just how insane the, the world is right now. And so the desperation. So it was a fine line of like, I don't want to show too much that I know everything, but at the same time, I have to play like as if we're building this relationship and then reveal that moment. But uh, it was very important to me that he knew. And when, when you saw it, I wanted people to go, oh, did he know the whole time? Or did he was just, was he just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to play that game where it's just like, oh, he doesn't know. He's just trying to have a friend. 
And then when you see it, if you look back and if you really dissect it, you'll know exactly when. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, oh, I know who this brother is. <laughs> now, now, Brathwaite, through all the little hints throughout that episode that we got, is not a killer. He wasn't a murder. Not when I say killer, he's not a murderer. He wasn't a murderer pre-apocalypse. He's not a murderer. He will kill to survive. I'm not saying he yeah. won't, but he's not a murderer. Uh, is that how the script was written, or is that your spin that you wanted to put on the character? Uh, I think it was written in there. I mean, in the, in the script, he didn't even shoot. Yeah. Yeah, That's in right. the script, I asked him to shoot. I was like, look, I don't want him to look like a punk. Can he at least shoot one zombie? <laughs> I was like, I got street cred. I can't, <laughs> I can't have a rifle the whole time and not shoot it at least once. But that was not about that. But it, it, uh, uh, again, it added to the whole illusion of because there's also the idea of it's part of his imagination, and everything like that. But you're absolutely right. I think Brathwaite, you know, if anything, was probably a server. You know, somebody that basically runs the errands or whatever. He's the talkative person. You know, he's the people person. Yo, I can get you this. I can get you that. Whatever, whatever. But uh, as far as being a murderer, absolutely not. And no. he, you know, I think I think the script uh, helped push that narrative even more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, Justin, there's been a whole bunch of speculation, which I don't personally buy into. That that whole episode was a hallucination. For Spears, I don't really buy it. What's your take on that? Um, I I actually always read it as it it was a hallucination. All right. Spe- <laughs> I mean, ju- I mean, Spears is hurt. He's he, dying. Yeah. Yeah, he's hurt. He's dying. I think, um, you know, in it, and it's leading us up to episode seven. I think there's, um. It, I, for me, this whole episode is about learning forgiveness, you know, and you know the uh, Brathwaite's line bygones, you know, um, as it's kind of been all over the, all over Instagram. Every time we post a picture together, people are like bygones, <laughs> you know, and um, but I think I think that's the theme of the episode. It's it's about learning to let go, learning to forgive, and which I think he's ultimately wrestling with for you know. Um, Reencountering with with Rose, exactly. Uh, now, Bashir, that moment where you guys are trying to start that campfire, and Spears empties the chamber uh, from his gun, you had that look for a split second, like, "Oh shit, this guy's gonna take me out." Uh, is that the look you were going for? Like a little bit of fear? It lasted a split second, but like, you're like, yeah. "What the hell is he doing?" No, it, well, it was more of like. Is he gonna do something about it? You know what I'm saying? Like, is he? Is he? Did I make a mistake? Number one, giving him the gun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then and then it was just like, and and the thing is, because I watched it the other day, and I was just it, it, the thought I remember in my mind was like, <sighs> is he gonna? You know what I'm saying? Like, does he know? Does he not know? And if it's gonna, it's so quick. It's so quick. But literally, like, the thought was more like, ah, is he gonna? Is he? Did I fuck up? Did yeah, I fuck up? Gotcha. Did now, I fuck up? And then he's like, boom, I'm like, oh, good. Good idea. Let's go. <laughs> maybe I trusted him way too much. Of, you know, maybe he does know. Maybe he does, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that really helped a lot. Uh, but it was cool that they captured that because I was, man, J- John, the whole team did such an incredible job of of making sure that they, they really capture all of our moments, man. It, it was such a, man, I, I got to give him, a shout out and a lot of love and just let, letting them know like these guys are so professional and, and so detail oriented, man, you know, and, and it, it hurts me sometimes when I see people and they're like, ah, the show, you know, it's just like, a zombie. I'm like, man, if you really break this thing down, you'll see the amount of work that goes in from the makeup artists, from the lighting. I mean, everything, everything is so detail oriented and so great that, yeah. And I think, and I, I also think, you know, both John and, and Abram, who are the only two directors of the show, they're such uh, cinephiles. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the, you know, they're pulling from so many different references, things that I, I, I have not seen. You know, they'll be like, oh, have you ever seen this 1962 French film? And I'm like, nope, haven't seen it. The bridge. What's that? 
what was that movie he made us watch with the bridge and then the guy oh, was a oh. uh, sorcerer yeah it was so dumb yeah yeah it was so good <laughs> I bet, but they have they have such obscure and um deep references um that they're pulling from for for a specific shot or just you know the way they want the episode to feel and so uh the creators of this i mean i think there's a reason why this show it is so good is you know they're they're really combining so many different pieces of cinema you know um so yeah i mean credit to, to those guys oh they're, yeah they're, oh yeah and, and allowing allowing all the ideas to exist you know what i'm saying like it's one thing to be like all right this is what it is and it's just gonna be that but when you allow all the ideas from maybe it is an hallucination maybe it is a real thing like when you do that because at the end of the day the audience is going to make up its mind we're doing this you know for for the entertainment but it's it was very rare to see that to see a place where every idea worked it did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, it helps well and, so, and then and then it allowed us to have these kind of conversations that we're having now right like they you know john was is a big believer in not holding the audience's hand he likes to treat the audience um as as smart individuals you know so he he likes to leave things really vague and, and let the audience figure it out. And he always says, you know, the audience's imagination is scarier than anything I can create. Oh, yeah. That's you why know? that whole hallucination thing, it could be, it couldn't be. Yeah. We don't know. Uh, now, when do you think, Bashir, when Brathwaite finally reveals to Spears, little James, who he really is around that campfire, uh, what do you think pushes Brathwaite to actually give him the big clue to reveal your identity, which ultimately led him to figuring out he was supposed to kill you and you survived it. You think Brath, what pushed Brathwaite to make that decision on the, around that campfire? Well, the, the survival instinct, I mean, there's two of us, if we're going to hang around long enough. I got to be able to make sure that number one, we are able to interact with each other, and also, I mean, I would, I would add the alcohol as well too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the alcohol and, and all of that, especially after the peanut thing, which really allowed me to be loose and make fun of them. But then it was just like, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me see where he's at. Because if we're, if it's gonna end, let's end it now. If if we're gonna hash it out, let's hash it out now. Because we're in a vulnerable place. We're in the woods, we're both drunk, and we gotta either move forward or not move forward. So if we're gonna if we're gonna do this, because even even the, the the you know, I said it, I was like, hey, I'd rather eat this now instead of dying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been saving this. I've been saving this for a very specific moment. You know, so even that thought alone is like, okay, cool, this is a special moment. If I'm gonna share this with you, that means either we're gonna continue this journey together, regardless of what I know, or we don't. All right. Now, Justin, that's when the whole bygones thing was really coming up. Why do you think Brathwaite stopped short of telling you, hey, you put two in my back and you thought I was dead? Why do you think Spears uh, stopped? I mean, you know, why do you think Brathwaite stopped short of telling Spears the whole story and let you try to figure it out if you do remember it? Honestly, my <laughs> short answer... I think he just like fucking with me. <laughs> like, I, I, I think I think he liked. I think that was his upper hand. I think he liked knowing, knowing that he knew that I didn't know. Yeah. You know, and so I think I think that's you know it um, kept him on the on their higher playing field. Okay, that makes total sense. He want he wanted to keep that upper hand. Now, yeah. wh one of the most overlooked uh, or not talked about scenes in that episode is when you guys go into that, when you're running away from the zombies and you go into that cabin and you see that mass murder slash suicide that took place with the one guy still alive, the cult leader, you would suspect, saying he was waiting for you. Now, did Spears, Justin, think anything of this guy besides being maybe a crazy and I'm going to fulfill his last wish? He wants me to take him out? He says he's been waiting for me? Fine, I'll take him out. Or was there anything more to that? I think uh, there was a little bit more for, for, I think, Spears. I think he, 
I don't know. I, I think for him, it was that moment was the final straw for Spears. I feel like, you know, seeing all the carnage that has happened, you know, over the six months that they're in, they've been in this apocalypse. Um, and, and then finally seeing this mass suicide and then seeing this guy I, and then popping him for me was a moment of like, and I'm done, you yeah. know, and, <laughs> like, you know, and, and again, if, if, Brathwaite is kind of a figment of his imagination and, and he's throwing up in the background. I use that as what, what Spears is feeling on the inside, like, you know, yeah. puking, you know, out of disgust. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it was this final moment of, of seeing the craziness that this world has become. And he's just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Gotcha. Now, uh, uh, Bashir, Let's flip characters. Let's say you were the one in the lead in that occult house, and you had, you know, the gun on him. Does Brathwaite pull the trigger on that dude, or no? I don't think so. I mean, I don't think so. I I, I, I don't think so. I think he was trying to talk him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> After seeing all the carnage, like the 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 like, mass, he'll make a lot of like he'll probably make. No, I mean, seeing that carnage would definitely mess him up, but. You know, again, you know, to to Spears' point, it's like seeing that much evil will always mess you up. It will definitely mess me up. And understanding, like, these people took their lives for this, and here is an opportunity to to survive and make it different. You know, I, I wouldn't grant him that wish. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. for me, it's like, you, because you, I've learned it as Brathway, because I've done my own journey, and I almost died. And so I have to give him life, you know? So hence my character and my jovial ways, because I'm like, dude, I survived, you know, two bullets. So for me to try to do that to, to somebody else, especially that one time, I'll be like, nah, I'd probably say, hey, man, he probably just needs some sun. <laughs> <laughs> now, the big man. And, and I, I also say, you know, there's a little overlap, too. I mean, I think, um, I don't know, I don't want to say it gave Spears the idea, but you know, he does the same thing. This guy asks, you know, Spears to take him out, and then he asks Anna, and with the same gun. Wow. So I, you know, I think there's some some um, overlap there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that until you just said it, but you're absolutely correct. Now, Bashir, there's a like you guys said, John Hyams, great director. Abram Cox as well, a great director. Um, this show has a lot of, like you said, they don't like to serve it up to the viewers on a silver platter. The white horse, a uh, big metaphor. Is that like, for me, it was like a metaphor of redemption, bygones. Uh, what do you think, what was your take on that whole white horse when you were acting the scenes out and when you read the script? Uh, for the first time we see the white horse, it, it, there is this, especially the person riding the horse it for me it was just like oh, okay cool death and he had skulls and i'm like okay this is death trying to chase us but the white horse at the end for me represented freedom like pure freedom in a sense of no matter what happens i'm good like i am no longer gonna try to allow myself to make sense out of all of this and i could finally find peace and and, and, and and try to be part of this world regardless of what happens. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. my heart horse really represented so much freedom. So whether he pulled the trigger or not, my mind was already like, I'm out there, man. I'm I'm ready to go. So it it was it was um it was a beautiful symbol for me. It was it was literally just just freedom and, and also the fact that he never like I never rode a horse before. I, I don't even know why I want to ride a horse, but never wrote it and and there is something about that there is something about going to the unknown and going you know what let's go let me try it let me try it and to see such a beautiful peaceful animal like that that why why you started taking uh, horseback riding lessons yeah <laughs> <laughs> you see on his instagram he's been riding horses and stuff no. like I've been riding horses right after this. Uh, and I think definitely, I think it inspired me as well, too. My dad was a, like, love horses. And and also, yeah, like, riding horses made me even more realize, like, how spiritually connected it is. Because they're, they're such beautiful beings, and they take in your spirit. They take in your energy. 
you know? So if you're like tensed up, they're tensed up. So you have to literally learn to let go. My, my coach always tells me, he's like, let go, relax, relax, relax. So knowing that information now is definitely in a sense of like, relax, let everything be, let, let, let it be and just go with it, go with the flow. I assume on the set, even if you did ask, they wouldn't let you ride that horse. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> you couldn't even guide the horse. <laughs> oh, man. Now, Justin, I took that white horse, I mean, purely for Brathwaite's character, not for Spears so much. Do you agree? Um, well, if it wasn't the- a hallucination. If it was a hallucination, then it's your subconscious. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, similar to what Bashir said, I, I, I took it with the man on the horse. I always took it as death coming for him, you know, um, and uh, and then at the end, when the horse is just there by itself, you know, I, you know, it's a good question. I think if, if it, I always looked at it as a hallucination. And so it was there for me and it represented um, for me, it was his the horse kind of walking off was kind of uh, his his conscious finally walking off or his mind kind of his, um, yeah, his like mental state was yeah. kind of <laughs> breaking at that point, you know? Um, but if, if Brathway was real, I think it was, I think like Bashir said, it was, it was freedom. Freedom. Now, Bashir, do you think Brathway knew that while you had your back turned to Spears, he had to drop on you with the gun? I mean, he was pointing it right at the back of your head. You think he think- knew? I don't think it mattered. At that point, at that point, it didn't matter. I when he said, I remember now. It, it, I, I remember doing this. I remember my heart just falling to the ground, like, okay, he knew this was gonna happen. All right. Like because you know, you go through all these scenarios. I was like, if I tell him he's gonna either try to kill me or not kill me. But at that moment, with the way he said it and just hearing from his voice, I was just like, All right, now I have to be okay with whatever the decision is. So it didn't matter whether if you pointed a gun or not. You know, my place was like, I'm going to be at peace whether you shoot me or not. I'm, I'm here. And then the uh, the timing, man, John, so good. Because we shot it a couple of different ways. But uh, the timing, when he told me, I remember you whispering in my ears and he was like, uh, and then he didn't point, just walk away. <laughs> and I remember uh, the cameraman didn't know that I was walking away. And he was like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, you know, so I was just like, all right, cool. And just like the, the timing of knowing when to just like take that step was literally when I finally like released everything. And it was just like, all right, I'm good. So you see, they're going to shoot me while I'm walking or doesn't. He doesn't. Exactly. Now, Justin, for you. I didn't. I, didn't, I also didn't know he was going to walk away. So it was. <laughs> I was I was also like the actor Justin's like what's he doing? <laughs> that that's John Himes trying to get a really legitimate reaction from you. Uh, yeah. Now Justin, what do you think it represents when jo- when Spears does not take the shot? Is that uh, Spears finally accepting bygones, for lack of a better term? Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that's Spears finally uh, accepting bygones and, and letting go and forgiving. Um, you know, I think, and, and again, I think that that final moment of um, him shooting the cult leader was was him having enough. I think I think in that moment, he's, he's done with, with killing, with shooting, with death, carnage, you know, and I think he's finally just like, letting go and wants wants some rest and as he says he's tired you know and, and wants some peace and quiet yeah now raising the gun in the first place the way i took that was you still trying to be loyal to your big brother what do you mm-hmm. take do you agree i mean what was your reason that you thought of as to why spears would raise the gun up to brathwaite I'm gonna go with your answer. That was a good answer. <laughs> I actually, I actually didn't think of that. As <laughs> yeah, I thought that he was uh, his. I I assumed that your brother called a hit for Brathwaite. Yeah, yeah. Made you carry it out, and it was a way for you to honor your brother. And also, think- also added something like, <clears throat> "Do you know what I'm saying?" Like, like it made me think of like, 
what did I do so bad that you still want to kill me? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if we ever get to see the free stuff, like, I was like, it, it was so important for me to be dead, you know, uh, for me to get shot twice in the back and then for him to even want to raise, because there was a little hint of anger. I remember, we're like, you know, we watching it, I'm like, oh, wow, like, because you were just like, oh, I, I killed your motherfucker. And I was like, oh, shoot, okay. Well, <laughs> like, I thought we were cool, brother. Like, <laughs> well, so, I, I, for me, it was, it was Spears didn't want anyone to know who he was. You know, I, I think he was trying to, you know, um, run from his past, you know, and also and also the, the whole storyline with all of the money and, and Brathway start asking about the money again. I think I think he's just covering up his past and covering up his tracks doesn't want anybody to find out what he was before you know yeah 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 that makes total sense now during shooting when you guys were in the woods uh, i guess some unexpected rain happened uh you know how was it working in the damn woods is the rain i mean how did you guys and the and the crew handle that this year well first of all um uh calgary is amazing um i'm just gonna say that from from the jump Cause it was so beautiful. <laughs> there were times I was weird, like I was like laying on the ground, and I thought I was on set. And I was like, "Wait a minute, this is real dirt this year. This is not. <laughs> this is not a set. This is this is real life. It it's so beautiful. The air is beautiful. Everything is so great. Uh, but when they told us about the rain thing, and I've done a, uh, I forgot which show I did, but I did something where I had to work on the rain, and I remember how comfortable it was because the water was warm and everything is great so i was like oh this is gonna be great this is gonna be you know this is gonna be like you know like one of those old movies where you see them they're talking perfectly fine and the rain is just dripping on them like uh yeah. road to, like road to perdition i was like man they're really kind of calm to be able to shoot and it's raining so hard but then uh when they did it whatever the machine that's supposed to make the water warm was was broken <laughs> So it was freezing. Like, I'm talking about, like, teeth shattering, freezing. And so we're just like, oh, step. And we have a wetsuit on. And then we have the layer of clothes to the point where we couldn't take any breaks because we were like, there's no point. Because they're like, oh, do you guys want to take a break, warm up, and then come back? I was like, nah, there's no point because we're just going to get even colder and we're going to miss the heat. Yeah, the the transition, the initial shock is worse than just you know. Once you're in the cold, you it's like it's like getting out of a pool, right? You're just like, let me just stay in it, you know. Um, but it, it, yeah, and and not to mention it was also like you know eight degrees <laughs> outside. So yeah. meanwhile, the rest of the crew, everyone had puff jackets on and you know beanies and heat vests and whatnot. And me and Bashir, woo, we were mad. <laughs> Remember, like, and we shot through the night. So by like four in the morning, we're like literally teeth chattering, like, like hands numb. We're just so cold, and we forget we're mic'd, and we start cursing. We're like, man, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the director and DP are like, uh, we can hear you guys. We're like, oh, whatever, we're cold. <laughs> when he snaps at me on the in the on the the rating scene, he like really just snaps. Like he was just like, man, God, motherfucker. Fuck this. <laughs> <Cold. laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it wasn't much acting needed. In that. Oh, man. Now, be sure we heard Justin tell the story about the rabbit shit and like the Tootsie Roll. I want to hear you tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh because i you know we know each other for a while and the more you talk to me you realize i'm kind of a joker but uh uh i remember going up i think it was like the second day of shooting <laughs> yeah it was the second day of shooting i, went up, uh, huh? I think it was the first day of shooting <laughs> it was the first day <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, it was the second. It had to be the second. I wasn't that bold. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the first day we did the the car scene, we did the the water and all that stuff. Because I remember it was the next. It was the next day. Because I remember talking to him and I was just like, "All right, John, I want to play a little trick on <laughs> on, uh, on Justin." Because I always get there early. I like to just be there and look at the environment and just pre map map out what I'm gonna do. And then when I when they they were explaining to me the the prop person was like, all right, these are Tootsie Roll and nothing, and I was like, oh, but it looks so real, and I was like, okay, please do not tell Justin this. And he was like, <laughs> I remember the prop guy was like, 
yes. And I was like, yes. So he was in. So I'm going up to John. I was like, John, look. A little something to, uh, on Justin. I'm going to pretend like this is real. So you just, just let it go. He's like, oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. He's like, great. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, Justin comes in. He's like, hey, guys, whatever, whatever. And the prop guy, you know, he has to show us everything. The prop guy comes in. He's like, hey, so these are, are organic um, feces, uh, rabbit feces. They're actually real. They're organic. He's like, there's nothing wrong. We have, like, he, he came up. The dude came up with, like, a whole thing about, like, it was grass fr- uh, fed and, you know. He came up with a whole backstory. And- Exactly, and Justin, I remember Justin going, "Oh, he's like, so does that mean we could eat it?" And then, and then I remember my face going like, "Oh," and he's like, and she's like, mm, "I don't think, I don't think you should." And I remember I was like smiling, I was like, "Ooh, ooh," and I was pretending like it was bad. I was like, "Oh man, no, no, no." So Justin's like, "All right, whatever," and action. So I go up, I grabbed it, and I'm like, "Yeah, definitely rabbit." And, then he, and I gotta give him props. Justin did not break. Justin, if anything, intensified his look. He was like, <sighs> <laughs> he intensified his look, and I'm like, oh my god, he's not laughing. So I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. And then cut, and everybody's laughing, and Justin is like, motherfucker. He's like, dude, dude, come on, man, please tell me you didn't eat that. Please tell me. I was like, what? He's like, dude, you're doing too much for sure. He's like, dude, you're doing too much, man. <laughs> Justin, did you do, did you do anything to get back at him on the set? You know what? I I didn't, but he has some, he has it coming. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was funny because I you know my look as I was one, I was like, well, he committed to this, so let me not ruin the steak. You know, if they want to use it. That's what was going through my head. And then also, I was, you know, for sure, he can get real method, you know. And I know him well enough to where he's like, you know, he's like, yo, I'm going to go all the way in. <laughs> and so when he did it, I was like, dude, calm down. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> like, Jesus. That's <laughs> an I, awesome story. Yeah, this ain't an Oscar performance, man. Like, let's just. <laughs> like, only a gift stop, bro. Like, for real. Like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the question marks uh, in that episode that I don't know if it will, will not get answered in future seasons, what happens to Brathwaite? All right. Now, in your mind, Bashir, what do you think happened after that scene, you walking towards the white horse to where Justin shows up at the lodge? This is your own thoughts. Uh, how do you fill in that gap? I mean, I, I first he learns how to ride. <laughs> <laughs> Takes him a couple hours, uh, and then once he finally gets that trust of that horse, I, I, I think he he. I don't know whether or not the cabin that I was talking about is true or not. That's that's the only thing that I haven't made up. But since we're just having fun, yeah. um, I would say that he would try to go to that cabin that he said that he knows. But then find out that it's emptied out, that people came in and you know, took everything. Everything is gone. And now now he's like, oh, the one safe haven that I thought I would have, it's gone. So now he has to try to find another place. But at least now he has a horse. Yeah. So it's just him dodging the zombies with the horse. So it becomes a story with him and a horse and, and, and zombies and trying to find a place. Like my, my secret uh, uh, um, you know, thought is, that would be kind of cool if they have a season three. If they don't go backwards and they go forward, like, randomly. I don't even need to be, like, in a lot of episodes. I just want a moment where, out of nowhere, Brathway comes in and saves the day on a horse. Like, <laughs> come on! Like, I just want to be able to, to just come in, like, right in there. Everybody go, yo! That's Brathway! And I'm like, come on, let's go. <laughs> like John Wayne in a Western coming exactly. in to save the day. Now... <laughs> that's, that's, one, now, one thing I, I would love to have it. <laughs> now, Justin, how do you rationalize it from the time? Because it, it's obvious you guys sort of go your separate ways. He goes with the horse. You continue on and you stumble upon the lodge. Uh, I mean, and you said that you took it as spirits hallucinating. So after you guys went your separate ways... You think that was it for Spears? He's like, man, I'm losing my mind. This is the bullet. I'm infected. It's spreading through my body. 
And he forgot, not forgot, we know he didn't forget the whole exchange with Brathwaite, but how do you think he rationalized it to himself? Well, I, I definitely don't think he, I don't think he thought he was losing his mind. And, I, and I'm not sure if Spears know, knew it was a hallucination. You know, I, I think that was kind of the choice for me, okay. you know, in understanding the storyline and what was happening as, as Justin, the actor. Um, but I, I think for Spears, I think, um, I, I, I think he is, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've never been shot before, but I, <laughs> I've never been shot and dying before, but I, you know, I've been sick and, you know, you start to imagine things and you start to, um, you know, kind of feel a little loopy or whatever. And so I can only imagine being shot, being in the cold, you know, trying to get to the next place. Um, I, I think he doesn't know if it was a hallucination. I don't know if it was, if, if he knew um, he was real. I think he just knew he came to terms uh, with what, what, you know, what what he needed to get to to see Rose again. Okay, all right. Now, Bashir, what was it like for you walking onto the set, season two, Black Summer, with Justin, who you obviously know, Jamie, Christine? Uh, was it a very warm, inviting environment? Uh, like we heard Jamie explain it, Justin explain it, Christine. Explain explain the feelings you got when you first walked onto the set. Man, that feeling started since the day I came to support him in season one. <laughs> like I came in and supported him and watched the first season at the premiere. And I was just like, and Jamie just welcomed me in the most amazing way. And we're both, you know, from the actor studio. So already we were like an, another level of connection, but on set. Man, you know, I, and I was lucky to, to have worked with the makeup artist as well, too, on Claws, Ashley. Um, and it, it was just a dream, man. And especially, like, I, I told somebody before, it was the first time where, yes, everybody's there to do their job, but everybody had the same goal to make a great thing. It, didn't be, it wasn't just a job everybody's art was being fulfilled in one way. You know, I saw Ashley, how excited she was about, you know, creating the scars and all that stuff. And the, the, the uh, costume designer, they were excited about it. It wasn't just like, oh, I got to do this costume thing for this job. Like, like every single person was just like, there was this excitement, this creativity and this energy of just like, man, we're, 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 we're doing something great uh, than just another paycheck, which yeah. made it, beautiful you know uh, and i think you know I, I wasn't there for the whole time but but it was just uh very exciting and and and, and also addictive because i was just like man look at all these people just wanting to win <laughs> you know uh and, and and especially we did it during covid so to see how much care they took to make sure that everything was done correctly to make sure that we feel comfortable everyone felt uncomfortable from making sure we have the, the areas that we needed and when me and Justin needed something that were there. I mean, it, 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 it was, it was, I could say it like by far one of the best sets I've ever worked on ever. Now this is to both you guys. I believe Justin, you posted like uh, from Hollywood insider the other day, the numbers, I believe uh, from Netflix and Jamie reposted it. Crazy numbers. How popular season two is starting with justin you know you've been on this show for two full seasons how does that make you feel oh man um good <laughs> <laughs> did you ever expect it to reach the level that it is reaching i mean you gotta you got first of all we have to admit you know, when a show premieres season one season two it takes a while to build up that loyal following now that black summer has two seasons under its belt it's definitely built up its credibility and there are people uh clamoring as to why hasn't netflix announced it's going to be a season three yet what's the hold up you know yeah. so yeah. uh is this i mean justin this has to be a new experience to be yeah. on a, a a series that has built up from season one to season two and has become so popular uh, I'm assuming you've never experienced anything like this before. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, you're very correct. I mean, this was my first, you know, lead in a series. And so um, 
you know, you, <laughs> as an actor, you're you're ready to take any job that's given to you. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, especially at at this point in our careers, you know, you you kind of audition, you audition, and you you hope you get something, and and you pretty much will take <laughs> anything, you know, uh, especially when when the rents do. Exactly. Um, so to to have booked this a couple years ago, you know, I, I wasn't sure what I was walking into, you know, I, uh, and so for it to become what it's what it's become, it's you it's what the dreams is made of, you know, it's what you, what you can only hope to be a part of something like this, you know? How, uh, I got to ask you this, Justin, how has uh, your career changed since season two came out? I mean, is your agent, uh, I mean, are you getting uh, scripts now left and right more than before Black Summer? You're getting more audition offers, you're auditioning more. How has life changed for you uh, because of Black Summer? Well, I just did a movie with Dustin Hoffman, so, oh. <laughs> so that's a that's a so that's, that's something that wasn't happening before. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean the the yeah certainly the frequency of auditions and and the kind of auditions I get have definitely changed. You know, it used to be a lot of guest stars and co star roles, and and pretty much now everything is is lead roles. Um, and yeah, it's it it completely changed my my career. Bashir, how does that make you feel about your friend? <laughs> oh man, freaking amazing! I'm like, go ahead, man, so you could do another show and put me in it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bashir, you have a, a long resume as well uh, on TV shows and movies. Since season two of Black Summer came out, has anything changed for you? In that, even though you were in that, you know that episode that amazing episode uh have you noticed any change in more calls more roles being offered or anything like that no i, I absolutely i mean <clears throat> like the show finally got i mean yes but i have a lot of credit but this one is super important for me because it actually got to expose a little bit more depth of what i could do you know, because usually it's, you know, I'm either playing a gangster or I'm playing, I play the baby daddy or it was very like two dimensional characters. But this one was a hint uh, and allowed people to really see those who know, they know. And those who don't know, they just found out about what I could really do. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so it was kind of it, it's definitely it's changed. I've had a lot of people call me up and, and go, wow, man, I I had no clue or, you know, even the writer. The writer himself, uh, um, Henry, who wrote the episode with John, um, he hit me up and he's like, man, I want to work with you. I want to write things for you. And I, I'm getting a couple people just wanting to work with me. So it's cool. It's, it it's, is. It's, it is. Uh, I, I got to say, too, Bashir used to, he's a hilarious, hilarious dude. And, you know, a lot of his resume is comedic, you know. So I think a lot of people in the industry knew him as a comedic actor. Yeah. Um, and right so I mean, he you you know you give him a comedic script, he's gonna he's gonna bring the laughs. Absolutely. You know? But uh, but I don't think they knew just how good of a dramatic actor he he is, and so I'm I'm so happy that this got to showcase showcase some of that. Me too. Me too. But sure, let's talk some about your other works for a little bit. Uh, in bigger, uh, there's a commentary on homelessness. Uh, how did you tackle that subject in doing research for the character Willie? Man, LA. Uh, seeing what. Skid Row? They, like. More importantly, I remember when they offered me that role. That was the first thing that came into my mind because I was like, okay, it's a comedy. And I'm like, I don't want this to be making fun of the homeless at all. You know, and, and, and I, I, you know, at that time, the, the skid row was just in a very bad place. And, and I've gone there and I've helped out. I've done some community stuff there. I've passed out burritos and stuff to people. And really, I've been there. And so it was really important to me to make sure that I brought Levy to it. And and I'm glad that they trusted me with that role to bring that. And, and what I brought was a lot of drama into it, to be honest. There are some funny moments. And I didn't know if it was going to hit because I'm like, yo, this is a comedy and I'm doing like real work. Uh, I mean, not that it's not real work, no, but I'm, I'm, doing, doing, yeah. I'm 
pragmatic work. And uh, and it worked out to the point where, you know, there was an article that came out and they were saying how that character really stood out. And and they were very glad that, you know, we tackled that that uh, that topic. So kudos for the writer, Felicia, who who decided to keep that character going and and also really creating a character that kind of like, you know, yeah, you, you fall in love with him. But, you know, yes, it's still a comedy, but you're still able to feel his um his journey yeah. so yeah man I, especially you know he was a vet as well too so i was just like yeah <laughs> i kind of you know I, I i do a lot of research and do my own stuff i remember like talking to them about even the the, the fatigue i was like well well so what year <laughs> <laughs> i was such that dude and they were just looking at me like ah, all right he's one of these guys <laughs> look man he just <laughs> i was like all right don't worry about it don't worry about it let me <laughs> Let me figure it out. <laughs> so I figured it out myself, but it was it, it was dope. It was dope that they allowed me to be creative with them. So you've dabbled in directing and you've done some writing as well. How important is it moving forward in your career to pr- continue pursuing directing and writing? Or is being an actor really what you only want to do? I don't know, man. I think I think nowadays it's almost impossible to just be one thing in this industry. It's literally almost impossible. Like those days of just like, I just want to be an actor. It's 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 hard. It's really really hard. And so I'm glad that I already I've already had that bug in me since my theater days. You know, I've, I've directed some some plays with my company, and and you know I've always had this voice of wanting to share these stories and comedic stories and all that stuff. So I know for a fact that I. I, I I, I want to be a content creator. I want to be able to uh, one day create these stories that I'm very passionate about and also direct because I, I really like directing a lot. Right. I, just need, yeah. I, I got a hypothetical for you. All right. You are directing. How much would you love to be directing this guy right here? Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin, would you take that job? Man, I don't know. Because I feel like the sheer... <laughs> Jill would just be like, man, you're not even doing it right. Here, here, step back. Let me, let me see how, what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I would, I would, I would have fun because I, you know, I know I would play so many tricks on him that he probably walk out of set like, look, for real, Bashir, you need to stop. All right, you're not about to make me <laughs> do these things. <laughs> she would go so far as like, this isn't even a real, it's not even a real movie. <laughs> if this is a comedy, he's in trouble. <laughs> Now, uh, Bashir, uh, you are from Haiti. What is it like uh, a Haitian American coming into the Hollywood entertainment industry? Man, it's uh, <laughs> it's a dream come true, man. I, you know, every Caribbean person will tell you that is like something that your family definitely frowned upon, and it's not something that you. You aspire to be in, in number two, especially for the Haitian community. We don't have, I don't, I can't count how many, I could maybe count for maybe two people or three people that I could say that represent us. Mm-hmm. I, you know, Jimmy Jean Louis is the only one that that's known enough, but not people that I mean, know. Like he was in Closet and he was in, uh, uh, um, uh, what was the superhero movie and he played the Haitian? Heroes. <laughs> What was what was the name of that show? Heroes. No, Heroes. Heroes. Yeah, Heroes. Um, but yeah, like you know, to be able to be, and there's a lot, a lot of younger ones that are coming out too, like Jean Eli, uh, Catfish, um, you know, Shane Premier, Karina. We all are that young generation that's 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 working finally. So we're super. I'm super excited. We're all super excited to finally represent our country and not only do our story, but it's cool to see how our, our way of approaching our work kind of mirrors uh, our culture. So it's kind of cool when people see our work and they go, wow, you guys are a little a little different. I'm like, yes, <laughs> finally, we're, we're, we're being seen in, in, in a different light. So uh, it's, it's so exciting. And that's what keeps me going, to be honest with you. You know, when the down, when when it's down and the downs are really down, you know, that's that's the thing that keeps me motivated to go. No, nah, I can't give up because, you know, I, my whole life yeah. I've been dying to be uh, to see 
a representation. And now that I have that responsibility to be to be one, I got to follow through. Now we see uh, everybody could see the passion that you have to bring stories to life, whether it's acting, directing, producing, writing, doesn't matter. When did you first realize? How old were you? How young were you when you when that you realized this is where your passion laid? Oof. I was I was old. apparently my brother would tell you I was insane. I was always around like making noises and <laughs> I was mimicking animals and dancing like Michael Jackson. I've always loved entertainment, but I never talk, thought that I would do it. It was just something that was fun for me to just like, oh, look, I could beatbox and I could sing and I could do all this stuff. But I never, the, the, the thought was never like, and then one day I'm going to be, it was just like, I could do these things, but I want to be a lawyer. <laughs> and it was until uh, my senior year in high school, actually, because, and, and I did, my junior year, I did um, West Side Story and I, I did so many acting stuff, but it was literally my senior year when I did Fences for the competition, you know, they have like the state competition and all the theater uh, nerds out there. <laughs> we, we, we do the state competition and you went Critics' Choice and I won Critics' Choice. And, and I remember doing the piece from Fences where I played Corey and I remember how it hit home so much and how it was just like so personal. And I remember seeing 3,000 people watching me on stage and how I felt after I did it and how they were moved and I just remember going, wow, I could, I could actually make an impact on people because it was such a personal journey about a son and a father and how the, the son is, doesn't feel that he's being treated fairly from his father. And at that time, I was going through a lot because my, my dad was not around and I missed him so much. Yeah. And so even this, this dysfunctional relationship, I wanted it, you know. And so I got to express it, and I really express it. I remember the other actor who's my, the same age playing my dad, and he's looking at me, and I'm like falling out, like, ah! And he's just like, you all right, man? <laughs> 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 but to see how people were touched by it, and my teachers, and going, wow, man, you really impact me, and you brought something so different to me. Oh, um, yeah, that, that's when I was like, yeah, I, I need to do this. I yeah. really need to. That's a great story. Now, we're almost out of time, but Justin, I got to ask you, the first time we ever spoke last fall, you had pretty much just finished shooting season two of Black Summer. Uh, and you look the same as you do right now. This is a question that a lot of people have asked. Uh, even me, when I first sat down to watch season two, I'm like, Damn, there's something different about Justin. It's not the beard. You've got a beard, not, not as long as it was in the movie. But it looked like you came out of 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. Uh, you were kind <laughs> of like, your face was kind of swollen. Is that makeup? What the hell did they do to you, man? <laughs> well, <laughs> Bashir, back me up. I mean, didn't, when you saw it, didn't, does he doesn't Wait, look like this. First season or second season? Second season. Um, well, we, we, we shut that after the real pandemic. So I was coming out, <laughs> I was coming out of the, the real pandemic and being stuck in my house with, uh, with my four year old. And <laughs> was crazy. They, asked, they asked us to keep this before the pandemic. So we already started to grow these stuff. So when, when they were like, oh, okay, we're going to hold you guys for two more weeks and then we'll shoot again. We're like, all right, cool. And then when we find out that, okay, we might not shoot for a while. You know, making the decision of like, well, do we cut it or do we just keep it? And I think the pandemic allowed us to be like, eh. Yeah. This is, this is a, don't forget that that we didn't know when we were going back. So, no. you know, every couple of weeks they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Oh, another couple of weeks, another couple of weeks. So I just kind of like just kept it. You know, if I had known it was going to be a six month hiatus, I would have trimmed it down. Yeah. And then, um, but my showrunner always says he he didn't expect to cast somebody as, in the role of Spears, who's quite so handsome. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, he, and so he always goes, "Man, you too pretty. Put some more blood on him. You know, put a put a scar on him. Put a cut on him. Like 
that first season, I remember he was just like, this, this isn't going to work. We're just going to put blood on you. We're going to cut you up. <laughs> so he always, I mean, I was totally game, you know, like I, I loved it. You know, it made me feel totally in character. So, uh, yeah, but it was it was definitely John's um, doing of, of kind of making me look as awful as possible. Yeah. No, I didn't say awful. I didn't say awful. But <laughs> like I said, you look like, you know, you've had better days. That's all, you know. You know, in the end, when just before you let Anna, Zoe take you out and you're like, you know, I'm still fly. Right. You know, I'm like, Spears will always be fly. Right. Right. This year. (laughs) You know, and I haven't given up. I'm not. This is not a question, but we know the trademark of Black Summer is nonlinear storytelling. I haven't given up on, you know, there should be a season three. I don't think why I don't see a reason why. There wouldn't, why both of you guys are not back in season three in one way or another. That's what I'm hoping for, at least, because you guys definitely brought the magic in that season, in that episode. I mean, kudos, congrats to both of you. That There's a reason why that episode, out of the entire season two, is everyone's favorite. Uh, and it's not because of the action. It's, it's about storytelling, man. It's about... Uh, two people coming together and just, you know, giving us their story. And that's, I think, what made it so impactful. And both you guys nailed it. Thank so you. congratulations to both of you. You absolutely nailed it. And the fact that you guys are friends for so long, uh, it has to have contributed to the chemistry that you guys brought on the screen. It has well, to. I, and, I, and I think, uh, you know, Bashir and I, we gave it all we had. <laughs> I think I can speak for Bashir when I say that, you know, and, and we had so much time with the script. We had so much time to talk about it and we rehearsed and, you know, we did we did everything we could to make that episode good, you know, and we we put our all into it. And, and it, Bashir, do you remember this story? <laughs> the, very, the very final take of, of shooting that, that episode, you know, they shoot things out of sequence. Mm-hmm. And so the final thing we did was us running to the to the uh, cabin and the door open to get in um and so the final take we they were like all right guys give it all you got and we're like all right so we full sprint we bust the door open and then of course it's wet from rain and so we like slip we fall i land on my back Bashir tumbles over me he hits me and then he falls on his back and we're laying next to each other and they're like cut perfect that's a wrap and we're just laying there on our backs just like you know out of breath you know uh wind knocked out of us it was just definitely a day because there's no way we would have been able to do another one like, <laughs> yeah it was like it was so perfect because if they would have said all right guys do one more i would have been like nah we're well, good. yeah well, we just oh, laid on that floor just like looked over at each other like damn we did it yeah. <laughs> You guys did, and you guys did an awesome job. I want to thank you both for coming on. It's been an honor. Justin, Bashir, uh, you guys are, you know, talented beyond words. Thank you so much for coming on our show, sharing your stories of Black Summer and your careers. Uh, We'll be definitely talking again. Uh, So stay safe. Look forward to seeing both you guys on the screen. Looking forward to that Dustin Hoffman movie, Justin. And like I said, uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing both you guys in movies and TV for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming on. Thank you to all our viewers. for tuning in. Sorry, I have one more thing I have to tell you before we get off that I've been meaning to tell you. You look just like our showrunner, John. John. (laughs) John Hyams. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen a picture of him, but you guys could be twins. I'm telling you. Ja- Jamie you? told me that. Jamie told <laughs> okay. me that. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, even just your essence is, like, very similar. <laughs> well, I'm going to take that as a compliment because that is one creative dude right there. Yeah. I'm totally. definitely taking that as a compliment. So thank you. Thank you, yeah. guys. Thank you to all our audience. Till next time, stay safe. On behalf of Bashir and Justin, stay walking, guys. Until next time, bye.